Hey everyone, welcome to Applications of Integrals. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the motion of a particle along a line, and this is both an AB and a BC topic. As you can see behind me, we've got baby stuff. I'm in the office, which will now be the baby's room, which my desk is getting moved today. So uh, what I want you guys, uh, what everybody to get out of this video is just to gain an understanding of how to solve a variety of problems involving distance a particle travels along the line. So distance, we gotta understand is different than net change, and we'll talk about that too. So the definition here of total distance, if you have a velocity function that's continuous over an interval, a time interval from t equals a to b, you can define the total distance traveled by taking the definite integral of speed. So the integral from a to b of the absolute value of v of t, that is going to give you the distance, the total distance traveled by a particle. And if you take the absolute value of velocity, you're taking really the integral of speed, okay? So a uh, couple things to consider. What happens if your velocity function is greater than or equal to zero for all your values on A to B, all T values on A to B? It never is negative. Or is it, so the idea here is you can rewrite that integral instead of using absolute values. Well, if you always know your function's positive, you can just take the integral of V of T dt and just ignore the absolute value, okay? but Conversely, just opposite, what happens if your velocity function is always less than or equal to zero uh, for t on that interval? Well, then you just take the opposite of whatever v of t dt equals. So that's two cases. The third case is going to say, well, what happens over your time interval if your velocity changes from positive to negative? What does that look like? Well, considering the situations below here, so if we look at these situations for velocity, now I'm going from A to B, okay? So that's the idea. And look over this interval. There's a certain spot where V of T is greater than or equal to zero, an interval where the velocity is less than or equal to zero. And again, from the final spot, an interval where the velocity again is greater than zero. So if we wanted the total distance traveled, we could set up the integral from A to B as follows. So here's A all the way to B, and we use the three intervals. So Again, if your velocity over an interval is always positive, just take the integral of the velocity over that interval from A to C. If your, your velocity is always negative over an interval, then you take the opposite of that integral from C to D of V of T. And then the last one here, look, is if you go from D to B and it's the velocity is always positive, then you can go from the integral from D to B of V of T. So let's look at an example. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, you can graph this velocity function, okay? And you're going to know that over that interval, that function is always positive on the interval. So from t cubed plus 3t squared dt, that function, that integrand, that velocity is always positive on the interval from 0 to 4. So you were thinking v of t is greater than or equal to zero on one to four. So I'm gonna apply that one rule. I don't need absolute value. I can just integrate this, which is what I'm gonna do now. So I just integrate and I get t to the fourth over four plus t cubed. Now I have to integrate that with uh, from one to four, okay? So the idea here is you can plug in. So if, if we think about this, we're gonna have four to the fourth over four okay, plus four cubed. From that, there's f of b minus f of a. So the fundamental theorem of calculus, you're gonna have one to the fourth over four plus one cubed. Now, that should simplify to 540 over four. That is the total distance traveled by that particle from, or 540, I'm sorry, I think you should get 507, whoops. No, what happened? We froze, we're frozen. Let it go, oh, there we go. Let it go, okay, go back. We're still frozen. 507, I don't know where I got 540, probably thinking that 507 over four, okay. Now, let's look at another example. The acceleration, okay, of a particle, or an object moving along a line is given at time t by a equals sine of t. 
when t equals zero, the object is at rest. So that's cool. We got a velocity, a zero equals zero. Okay. Now they want to know what find the distance the particle travels from t equals zero to t equals five pi over six. Now the big thing we have here is the acceleration function. I don't have v of t, but if I integrate acceleration, I get velocity. So I need to take the integral of velocity, or excuse me, acceleration, which is going to be the integral of uh, sine of t dt. And that's easy enough to integrate. We're going to get um, negative cosine of t plus c. Now, I don't have c. And if I wanted the total distance, I have to find c. So in red, they gave us velocity. They said at 0, well, the velocity at t equals 0, the velocity is 0. So we have 0 equals negative cosine of t. And we'll just switch colors plus c. Well, we know that at time zero, cos at time zero, velocity is zero. So we get zero now equals um, negative one plus c, which means that c equals one. So now I have the velocity equation that I need. I have the whole thing. I have velocity equals negative cosine of t plus um, uh, plus one. Okay, now I want to know from 0 to 5 pi over 6, I want to know the total distance. So I'm going to integrate negative cosine of t plus 1 dt. Now, cosine is greater than 0 from 0 to 5 pi over 6. Think of the unit circle. Okay, so I don't need absolute value bars here. So when I integrate this, I get negative, well, I can get t minus sine of t, okay? And I have to integrate that from 0 to 5 pi over 6, okay? When I do, I get 5 pi over 6 minus 1 half, okay? And that's the total distance traveled, okay? So that's a couple of examples. When a particle moves along a line, finding the total distance traveled by the particle. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and type them below. We'll see you next time.